Welcome back to Just Chatting, and this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own entertainment. So, no Audie here with me. He may come back in. He's in the other room napping. He had, he had a very interesting week. Um, as I mentioned, uh, a new washer and dryer came. That was very exciting. He has, in fact, napped in the dryer on the warm clothes. That's his way of welcoming the new appliance to his home. And I, I leave my dryer door open. I, well, not open, but, you know, ajar, a crack, because this is what he does. He will sneak into the dryer, and, of course, he is a black cat, which means he can blend in with dark clothing inside a dark dryer. You know they really should have lights on the inside of those things. But until they do, perfect camouflage for a black cat. So, consequently, I have gotten into the habit of leaving the dryer door open a crack because I don't want him to ever get, you know, trapped in there. And he is just resting from the overstimulation of new appliances, delivery people, etc. And of course, he went out over the weekend, rolled in dirt, made a mess of his old injuries, which had to be washed down. And uh, he's a handful. He really is. But as I say, he may come out before this is all done. We'll see. If he doesn't, I'll put some Audie videos at the end of this video for our little slideshow. All right, today I want to talk about the newsworthy lawsuits and what that may be all about. So, when we come back. So let's start with the rumor that the sock puppet is planning to sue Sasha Walpole for having come out and presumably he would be suing her for violating his privacy after he not only violated his own privacy, but her privacy in the bargain. I cannot determine that this is anything but a rumor at this point. Does that mean this isn't in his head? Of course not. Um, the Montecito menaces have proven that they can and will sue for virtually anything. Would it surprise me if he did this? No, of course not, because nutmeg sued the mail on Sunday over a letter she wrote, which subsequently turned out, according to absolute proof, an email she wrote to Jason Knopf, was written with the idea that it might be leaked, meaning that it was at least somewhere in her mind that this would be made public. And then, of course, five of her friends anonymously leaked portions of the letter to People Magazine. She didn't do anything about that. But when the Mail on Sunday published the entire text, thereby undoing all of the false impressions that came from these mm, carefully selected excerpts that had been released by People Magazine, then, of course, breach of her copyright, violation of her privacy, etc., etc., and she's suing. Now, it was a copyright suit. That, that was the basis on which she won her case, that they did breach her copyright. And I understand why the British courts came to that decision. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. And as I have mentioned on previous videos, I think an American court 
might have come up with a, a different decision as far as this goes, because here in the U.S., an intent to publish can override someone's uh, copyright. In other words, if it was written with the idea that it was supposed to be made public, then saying, oh, no, wait, it was made public. Well, that's not much of a defense. So things could have gone down differently. And when I say could have, that's all it is. When we're talking about legal cases, it, it, the opera ain't over till the fat lady sings. And that's all there is to it. it the court systems can be very unpredictable. So keep that in mind because the information I am about to give you is generic and general and not necessarily applicable to any particular legal case. Now, I've said this many times before, I'm going to say it again. I am not an attorney. This is not legal advice. I am an educator. My job is not to tell you what to do if you get your butt dragged into court. My job is to help you understand the process. That's all. So, do I think the sock puppet would consider suing Sasha Walpole? Well, after what Nutmeg did with her ridiculous little letter, which, as I've said in the past, I believe that whole thing was a setup from the get-go. It was probably a plot from that show she was on, Suits. They, they were a bunch of seedy lawyers, all of whom should have been disbarred. And in any real-world law firm, they would have been either fired, disbarred, sued, probably all behind bars. So, who knows? But, yeah, if that's the standard we're looking at, sure, why not? Um, as far as I'm concerned, it would only be adding insult to injury because he's already done enough to this poor woman. Would he hesitate? <laughs> Well, he's shown he wouldn't, so. But having said that, there is no evidence that I can find that this is anything more than either, one, a rumor, or two, a random thought bouncing around in the otherwise utterly empty head of a sock puppet. So what can you say to that? You know, it's like he'll just see a squirrel and go chasing after that, and the thought will flee from his tiny little mind, and it'll all be over with. So let's move on to another of these Montecito cases in the news. And this is Samantha Markle's defamation case against her sister, not maybe. Now, if you want details on that, that particular lawsuit, I would suggest you go over to the Royal Grift because she's been doing a series of videos about this. She is presenting the evidence that is likely to be presented at the trial. She's tearing it apart, juxtaposing one side against the other. You're going to get a lot of detail there. What I want to explain in this video is the deposition phase of the trial. Now, the judge in the case has recently said that both sides can begin the process of taking depositions. What this means is this is part of the trial that is called the pre-trial phase because it takes place before the actual trial, you know, in other words, before they go into the courtroom, stand before the judge and the jury and so on. But this is part of the trial. And, and that's where it gets a little tricky. In a deposition, both sides are entitled to appear. Uh, so the plaintiff and the defendant can both be present with their attorneys. It is recorded. Well, when I say recorded, 
I don't necessarily mean with a tape recorder or a video camera. In the old days, it was record. Oh gosh, the old days, my gosh. That happened like right up until about 20 years ago. So the old days weren't that old. Well, not, not by my standards anyway. In the old days, they would have a court reporter, a stenographer, come in and record everything. So there are many ways of recording the proceeding. A stenographer, a tape recording, a video recording. A, many times these days, they use all three. And there are advantages to that. Because occasionally, when you have a video recording, you can have portions of what is being said that is otherwise unintelligible. When a stenographer is taking that as dictation, he or she will invariably interrupt. Excuse me, I didn't catch that last sentence. Clarify it so that on that transcript, you have what was actually said and nobody ends up guessing. Video recordings can show people's uh, facial expressions and so on. Uh, audio recordings can disclose someone's tone of voice. There are advantages to each of the three. But recording it is a big part of the process. Another part of the process is the people being deposed, and these are potential witnesses in the case, are sworn in. So if they are not honest in their deposition, it's perjury. Ouch. They have to be giving truthful statements. And both sides, the plaintiff and defendant, can question them. So why does this even happen in the first place? Well, contrary to what we all see on TV all the time, trial by ambush is not something any court wants. People don't like surprises in a trial. The reason for this is a trial is a very limited venue. People are gathered together for a relatively short period of time, presenting the information, and it is ex expected that there's an end in sight, that you will proceed in an orderly fashion until all of the information has been heard. And if one side brings out evidence that catches the other side by surprise, it can delay the trial. Um, you can ask for a continuance and say, wait, we need to have this evidence examined we need to know it is what it purports to be, that the chain of evidence, in other words, where this came from, is accurate, that um, it's, it's basically the determination that the evidence that is presented is, is accurate. It is what it purports to be. Tape recordings aren't faked. Nobody's brought in, you know, doctored videotape. There's not some 17-year-old kid in the back room with his copy of Photoshop doctoring pictures. And that's why. Because when it comes to trial, each side is expected to put out what their case is so that the judge can determine the points of law and that's the judge's job to determine what is or is not legally admissible. And the jury, now the judge is the trier of law. The jury is the trier of fact. The jury can decide what they do or do not believe. So that's why this is done. Now, there are differences between a deposition and a sworn statement. And the primary difference is that fact that both sides send in their attorneys to question the witnesses. That's the key difference. And a deposition can, in fact, be admitted as evidence, as a tantamount to testimony, in the event that the person 
giving the deposition is not available at the time of trial. Perhaps they've left the country, perhaps they're sick in the hospital, perhaps they've passed on, whatever. So this is significant. What Samantha Markle's lawyers want to do is apparently they want to depose Nutmeg and the sock puppet. That means getting statements from them under oath. And Markle's, oh gosh, I can't say Markle, there are too many Markle's, and Samantha's attorneys would be able to ask them questions and probe a little. So this is interesting. This is going to create a body of testimony that can later be used in the case. Now, meanwhile, Nutmeg's attorneys are trying to have the case dismissed. This is no surprise. This is not just usually what happens. In Nutmeg's case, it is always what happens. They're going to try to get this thrown out of court. I do not feel it is likely they will be able to do this. And primarily, it's because we in the U.S. believe everybody's entitled to their day in court. And even if a case is, well, I don't want to say flimsy, but let's say not ironclad, a judge will usually decide it can go forward anyway. Usually, a judge will decide a case doesn't go forward when there is simply not enough basic evidence to support the, the primary contention. In this case, Samantha is claiming she was defamed by her sister. If there is a decent amount of evidence, the judge is probably going to say, yeah, sure, let it go to trial. Because here in the U.S., and I don't know what it's like in other countries, I just know our system, we do have that notion that everyone is entitled to their day in court. So a judge will generally not dismiss a case unless it is glaringly obvious that there is no case to begin with. And I don't think that's true in Samantha's case. Does she have enough of a case to win in court? That's a different story. It's hard to say. Nutmeg worked very hard to insulate herself from uh, the actual defamatory statements that came out in Finding Freedom. Her lawyers are claiming that the defamatory statements she made in the Oprah interview were opinion and therefore not designed to be statements of fact. So who knows? It's very, very hard to say. And the thing is, it, the fat lady hasn't sung yet. You just don't know how these things are going to sift out. The good news for Samantha is, considering the fact that I think more than the $75,000, see that's key, Samantha is only suing Nutmeg for $75,000. That's not a lot of money in the overall scheme of things, and it's certainly not a lot of money compared to the vast fortune that these folks from Montecito are accumulating thanks to Nutmeg and their charitable foundations and whatever. Drop in the bucket compared to those millions. It is extremely likely that all Samantha really wants is to throw the information out before the public. It seems far more likely that Samantha is appealing to the court of public opinion and just saying, here, look at this. You know, my sister said bad things about me. So does she need to win in court? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it will be enough to make her feel vindicated if she can, in fact, get some kind of admission from Nutmeg that those things shouldn't have been said. It's hard to say. Families are strange entities. 
And you never know. It could very well be that Samantha would just as soon have an apology as the $75,000. I guess we'll have to see how it all plays out. But that's where this one is going. And as I say, if you want the details of the evidence, I think most of us know the things that Nutmeg said about Samantha, why Samantha is taking this to court in the first place. Um, but if you want more details and you want an analysis of the evidence, as I say, scoot over to the Royal Grift. She is pulling this apart even as we speak. I just wanted to make sure you understood what it means when the judge said they can begin taking depositions. All right, that is what I have for you today. Oh, I'm sorry, we got company here. Let's see if he wants to come up. Do you want to come up? Well, you can come up if you'd like. No, I don't think, oh, I was wrong. He is coming up. All right, come on over. Come on over. Say hi. Oh, yeah, boy. You're getting a very good look it's right here. The neck injury, that scruffy little thing. Yes, he got he got hurt. It was it's superficial, so it's not very serious. But that's what he was rolling in the dirt, and he was very happy about it. So, yes, I'm glad you got a chance to come out and say hi. All right, he's done with me. That's it. I showed off his injury. He's not forgiving. All right. That is what I have for you this week. I will see you all next week. Seeing as we got a little bit of audio, you know, that tail. I don't know if you can see the shadow of the tail floating around in the background, but yes, he is flapping his tail at me. So we can go take a look at a different slideshow on the way out. I will see you all next time. Meanwhile, have a terrific week.